In Brazil and in Ecuador, two special patrol units operate on land, water, and in the air. In Brazil, it's the NAPOM. In Ecuador, it's the GIR. Traffickers of all kinds benefit from waterways to move their merchandise. Difficult to access, riverbanks and coves have always protected smugglers. The only way of stopping them is by boat or helicopter. Drugs, cigarettes, all kinds of contraband. These all-terrain patrol officers are fighting against a tide of traffickers. Guayaquil, nicknamed the Pearl of the Pacific. In this area, traditional fishermen work alongside large shrimp farms. Shrimp is the country's main export. It's also the area that the GIR patrols, the Ecuadorian police's response and retrieval group. The GIR is an elite unit, trained to deliver results in all circumstances, even on the most dangerous operations. This unit has always been discreet, and it certainly does not get much media attention. Lieutenant Del Poso gives himself heart and soul to the unit. The gear is part of my life. I give most of my time to it. I spend days on missions with my unit. In fact, it's like a second family. But I have to say the training is really intense. That's probably why we end up loving the unit and each other. Across Ecuador, the GIR counts 280 elite police officers. Guayaquil's section accounts for half of them. This elite unit operates on all terrains. Our river section was created about five years ago because robberies and piracy were becoming big problems. That's why the gear was tasked with manning the waterways. A large portion of our training is water-based, and right away we're better prepared to operate on the river. The men in the unit are subject to intense daily training. The officers have to be ready to move at any time. They live together in a military-like environment. The gear is an elite unit. It's our best police unit. You can ask any officer on the street. They'll tell you that the gear is the best of the best. Everyone wants to be in it, but not many of us get the chance. Foz do Iguaçu in Brazil is famous the world over for one reason. It's home to one of the seven wonders of the world, the famed Iguaçu Falls. Over 275 falls flow into each other along a three kilometer stretch. Millions of tourists come to witness this unique spectacle every year. The city also benefits from tourism, but underneath the rosy surface, it's fighting against contraband related crimes. The Panama River forms a natural border with Paraguay. Across the river, Ciudad del Este is a free zone. No taxes, no VAT. On average, goods are two times cheaper in Ciudad del Este than in Brazil. So it comes as no surprise that some attempt to discreetly cross the river by boat and bring goods into Brazil to sell. A special unit has been created to stamp out the smuggling the Napalm. Special Agent Rodriguez heads the unit. Now we're 
We're heading to the Social and Economic Frontier Development Institute. It's an organization that conducts research into crime along the border and the impacts it has on society. Over 15,000 kilometers of Brazil borders 10 different countries. Controlling the influx of contraband is an impossible feat. Brazil loses 115 billion real through smuggling each year. That's 34 billion euros. It's a lot of money. That's the total figure that smuggling represents. To counter this atypical crime, Nepalm has to be operational 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're going to patrol an area of the Parana River on the Foz de Guaçu territory. It's the border between Brazil and Paraguay. Here we can see the Friendship Bridge. It's the bridge that connects Brazil and Paraguay. During the day, the elite unit patrols the river, but it doesn't stand much chance of catching traffickers as they have lookouts posted along both riverbanks. Sometimes we arrive at a port and we hear that they've already gone somewhere else because they've been warned. It's organized crime because it's planned. They watch us from the moment we leave our base in the shipyard. As soon as the car leaves the base, they warn everyone. The feds are out. So they stop, they don't cross back over, and they wait until we leave. If we stop somewhere, they won't cross there. They'll go further along. To help combat this reality, the unit uses federal police helicopters. Smugglers are afraid of Nepalm officers. They don't mess around. Once they see them, they surrender immediately. Nowhere can be out of their control, not even the famed Iguazu Falls. The Nepalm officers' requisition boats usually are reserved for tourists. These are the only boats that can resist the violent currents caused by the waterfalls. Today, their mission is to make their presence known in all the zones around Foz do Iguaçu, even those that are extremely difficult to access. It's a warning for smugglers and traffickers. Today, in Ecuador, the GIR is tasked with a sensitive operation. The unit is in the heart of a poverty-stricken neighborhood, known as a hideout for drug dealers. After making a formal identification, the GIR arrests a group of men in the street. These drug traffickers are wanted men and will have to go to court for sentencing. They face between two months and 13 years jail time for their trafficking-related crimes. The men in the GIR risk their lives on every mission. To limit the risks, every day at dawn, the officers train in martial arts. We're practicing a martial art called Kyushu. We focus on specific pressure points. If you touch two or more points, you can render someone unconscious and send them into shock. We impress the public. We're our police force's last resort. Generally, we don't meet any resistance. People usually give in quite easily. 
Nice. The unit receives a call and training is interrupted. Thieves have been spotted by the shrimp farms. Lieutenant Del Poso has to go to the marina, where the unit's boats are waiting for them. Ecuador is one of the world's biggest shrimp exporters. Last year, organized gangs stole over 1.3 million euros worth of crustaceans. This is a serious case entrusted to the GIR. The unit isn't complete, which could lead to serious consequences for the team. On the way, two commandos joined the boat by helicopter. It's a particularly Toro op. The group is prepared. The shrimp farm is closed now. The team rolls into action. National Response and Retrieval Group. We have to secure this area. The suspects fled as soon as they spotted the GIR. However, the farm's manager is reassured by their presence. My name is Mario Berneo Saavedra. I'm the manager of the shrimp farm. The farm belongs to Caprimar, Marisco, and Salinaza Enterprises. Shrimp is one of the main economic resources and sources of income for the country. It's mainly exported. We were attacked three years ago. And a year ago, we managed to counter an attack where they would have gotten away with everything. We caught a lucky break. They were arrested because we immediately had backup from the gear. Information from an inside source led us to the arrest of two gangs. One of the guards was in cahoots with the gang. We questioned him, and then we caught them. The last time, in September, we caught 11 people, four firearms, and we recovered all the goods they were trying to steal. Our work mainly consists of carrying out preventative patrols in the Guayaquil Gulf, in particular to check that the farms are okay. Back at the base, Lieutenant Del Poso just has time to put on his uniform. The men are on standby. They have to be ready to leave for a mission tonight in the suburbs of Guayaquil. We're going to have to leave on our own. I'll take the camera you gave me. I'll put it on my helmet to film. The men seem calm. It's like routine to them. It's an anti-drug operation. Their mission is to arrest a drugs trafficker. The GIR will strike in the night. With a bit of luck, the wanted man will be sleeping in his home. Lieutenant Del Poso leads the attack. Open up. We have a warrant, ma'am. Open the door. If you don't open the door, we'll knock it down. In Ecuador, the GIR can operate at any time, day or night. Under one condition, the judge must give them a warrant in due form. The 
operation is a success. The man is arrested and brought into custody. And today, in Ciudad de Lerta, a major event. Pay attention. Here, we can see the ambush that ended with the most wanted drug trafficker in the world, the top drug trafficker in Paraguay. Rafat is dead, and these images show the ambush with the unmarked car. They tried to shoot out the windows, but they didn't succeed. I'm Robson Silva. I've been a journalist for 30 years. This crime reporter works at the heart of goings on in the region. His TV show is a showcase of crime, but he doesn't think twice about denouncing police blunders when they're true. But in his opinion, Nepal is a cut above the rest. The Nepal is a branch of the federal police that is very well respected and has a lot of credibility in the country. It's important to know that the Nepal, both in the Iguazu region and the operational zones around Itaipu Lake, has never had and probably never will have any corruption or police blunders or any other type of unpopular attitude. In this elite unit of the Brazilian federal police, the agent are just as comfortable on water as on land. Agent Kleber and his colleague Machado have been on a stakeout for two hours, but their patience will soon be rewarded. <laughs> The efficiency of Nepal agent isn't down to luck. It's got more to do with the quality and frequency of training sessions led by Special Agent Rodriguez. We're leaving for police officer training. We're going to do a firearm gun training session. Special Agent Kalori is the group's veteran. He is responsible for getting the men used to handling heavy weaponry. This training session represents the first time the agents have been exposed to this weapon. We're going to show it to them, and then they'll have to fire a few rounds to understand how sensitive the gun is, how precise the shot is. Then they're going to get to fire off more rounds. This is a mortal weapon at 700, 800 meters. But for a first introduction, this is a good distance to see how far they can shoot. This gun's firing rate can be set between 550 and 900 rounds per minute. There will be training sessions all morning. After the heavy weaponry training, it's the sniper's turn. Every day, the men improve the accuracy of their shots. The men in Nepal quickly switch from simulation to reality. The next day, they are on a stakeout on the riverbank. An informer has given them the location of a likely drugs drop coming in from Paraguay. After hours of waiting, hidden in the vegetation, their patience is rewarded. A boat is moored on a lower level. There's no more room for doubt. They are definitely traffickers. The group's tactic is to cover the enemy with gunfire during the attack. The officers don't shoot to cause harm or to kill. They want to take them by surprise and prevent any desire of returning fire. 
A partial success for the Nepalm unit. The dealers got away, but they left behind several kilos of cannabis. Just like the elite Brazilian unit, the GIR in Ecuador is also tasked with a wide range of missions. Every man has to be operational under any circumstances. This includes an especially sensitive task, locating and handling explosives. So this is dog training. It's a training process where we teach dogs to detect the scent of explosive substances. The explosive is placed in a box and mixed in with other boxes. The dog then gets into action. The police dog finds the box with the explosive material in it every time. Afterwards, we give them a treat, something they really love, the ball. In fact, we use their primary instincts, playing, hunting, and capturing prey. The dogs find that in the movement of the ball. The next stage is the real conditioning of the dog. Its attitude in a crowd and its reaction when faced with explosives have to be perfect. The slightest error could lead to serious consequences. You have to understand that explosives can be detonated by any movement, sound, or change in temperature. The dog's movement has to be passive. It will sit or lie down to avoid any movement that might cause a detonation. Today, the canine section's mission is inspecting the Guayaquil governor's palace. A political meeting is going to take place in the GIR as to ensure the location is secure. Canine's unit's reactions, the offices are declared clean. We're going to a location where we can safely train with explosives. I have to point out that the gear is the only unit allowed to use, handle, transport and destroy explosives within the National Police Force. For mine clearing operations, there is no margin for error. We're going to show you how we destroy explosives. Most of the time in our country, we find abandoned fragmentation grenades in the city and in the countryside. In this scenario, we have two fragmentation grenades and one countercharge. We'll see how exploding the countercharge neutralizes or destroys this type of ordnance. As you can see, everything has been destroyed. But you can still see the fragments in the tire. We can see fragments embedded in the tire. You can imagine what effect this would have on a human body. If all those fragments were to hit a human being, it would be fatal. The section leader is responsible for teaching the men about different types of explosives, particularly those used by terrorist groups. The second charge for the second demonstration will be 250 grams of pentalite. We're going to detonate it using a remote. Remoto, y vamos a ver cómo 
The tires will be thrown 30 or 40 meters in the air, showing us the impact of the explosive material. The GIR of Guayaquil is prepared to act on all terrains. Whether in the city or on the river, this unit can face all situations, even the most explosive. In Brazil, Agent Kleber's day begins with a reconnaissance patrol. The aim, finding clandestine ports used by traffickers. Often, there are nothing more than little dirt tracks leading into the forest. You need to have a good eye to spot them. This is a well-known port used for contraband. It's been a problem for a long time. We call it the Navy port because there's a Brazilian Navy building just behind there. It's got nothing to do with the smuggling, but it works as a hideout for us. The track leads to a favela that used to be controlled by a man called Dentao, Big Tooth. There's always been a lot of contraband goods and drugs passing through here. While Kleber's patrol sails along the Paraná, Special Agent Rodriguez is on a stakeout on the riverside. It's too easy to spot police boats during the day. The special agents has a better chance of apprehending criminals from the riverbank. We're waiting for the signal from another group at an observation post that's monitoring activity on the Parana River. They're monitoring for possible smuggling of illegal products, people bringing contraband into Brazil from Paraguay. A boat has been sighted. As soon as the occupants step into dry land, the team rolls into action. Come here, please. What do you have there? Water and meat. Your documents, please. Do you own the boat? You know that you can't cross here. But I'm just taking a passenger. You can't cross the river here. Where do you live? There, I sell newspapers. I know this is an easy place to cross, but it's prohibited. So this is a warning. And the next time, if you're apprehended, we'll seize your boat. Now go back to Paraguay with your boat. You've been warned. OK? No traffickers this time, just Paraguayans coming to work in Brazil. The friendship bridge that connects the two countries is often congested. It takes over an hour to travel between Paraguay and Brazil by car whereas crossing the river by boat only takes approximately 10 minutes. The Napalm officers simply remind them of the law. This type of violation occurs so frequently that arresting everyone would be a waste of time. They're only interested in smugglers. And there's no lack of them in Foz do Iguaçu. Back at the station, Special Agent Calori has to log evidence seized the day before. Mr. Paco Roban. Yeah, Paco Roban. And this is a multimedia device for cars. You set it on the dashboard. It's for all types of vehicles. There's a 100% difference in price between Paraguay and Brazil. In Brazil, it's worth twice as much. This seizure is worth approximately 13,000 euros a small catch in the big scheme of things. 
Special Agent Kalori has to take the vehicle to the Federal Revenue Agency, where all seizures are stored. We're at the Federal Revenue Agency, where all seized goods and vehicles are sent, whether they've been seized by the Federal Police, the Revenue Agency, or other bodies that work for the state. Seized goods are sent here and logged in one of these buildings. Then they're stored in a warehouse while the Revenue Agency waits for the taxes to be paid. After a certain period of time, the seized items go to auction. The money from their sale is used to support various public agencies and departments. Here, in Foz do Iguaçu, the volume of goods seized is simply staggering. And there's more of one product than anything else, cigarettes. Come see. Jorge Almagro is the director of this federal agency. Here, this is a recent cigarette seizure. There have got to be 700 boxes. We destroyed some this morning and we'll continue this afternoon. Packets and cigarettes are sent to an enormous crusher. There are so many that the compacted cigarettes are recycled as fuel. All this waste material generally gets used as fuel for furnaces in the ceramics industry. Rather than burning wood, they burn waste. In some ways, we're helping to protect the environment. Because instead of burning wood, they burn this. Each year, over half a billion cigarettes are seized and burned in the Revenue Agency's compactor here in Foz do Iguaçu. But the best is yet to come. In huge fields, seized vehicles are rotting with the passage of time. There's no way to know just how many there are. This is another field, a second police field where we store impounded vehicles, boats, and motorcycles that have been seized. This was all subject to seizure because it was considered to be the proceeds of crime. As they weren't seized with drugs, they haven't been taken to the Federal Revenue Agency. We need to change legislation so that we can send all of this to auction too and put the money earned into an account while we carry out our investigations. That would prevent all these valuable goods from being stuck, sitting uselessly in a parking lot, deteriorating. In Guayaquil, the GIR agents are on high alert. They never know when they'll be called up. The officers always have to be prepared for any operation and keep their cool when using firearms. Now I'm going to increase stress levels. How do I do that? By using physical exercise so that our stress levels rise, like in a real-life situation. Under real circumstances, we go through physiological changes, physical, psychological, and neuropsychological changes. In these moments, it's easy to lose control. We can lose movement, our motor ability, especially during confrontations. Physical exercise with all our equipment enables us to better prepare for situations we might face in real life.
the shooting practice is hardly over when Lieutenant Del Poso takes charge of his men. The exercise is simple. Enter a building and neutralize a criminal. The GIR undertakes this type of training three times a week in addition to real operations. The team has to be able to coordinate without a hitch. This type of training helps us to reduce our stress levels as much as possible. In this type of exercise, we're fighting what we call stress, fear, pressure, the feelings we're faced with in real life situations. It improves our confidence for tactical ops. The men won't have to wait long before putting this exercise into practice. The same night, there's an operation in Guayaquil's slums. The GIR has many informers in these areas. One of them has formerly identified a wanted man. The suspect has gone to his home for the night. Lieutenant Del Poso leads the operation. The GIR has to quickly take control of the location and apprehend the suspect. The unit lives up to its reputation and once again, a dealer will be brought to justice. The workday is beginning at the Nippon base. Guns are regularly maintained with great care. The whole unit does it together as a group. We usually do it all together. Everyone has their own gun. We come together to carry out this task. It's a bit like a family here. As we're in dangerous situations together, and because we spend lots of time together, sometimes even more than we spend with our own families, we end up with a deep bond, a very real bond. That's the life force of this group. The Esprit de Corps is especially important for the Nepal. Every agent has to be operational and unified. Whether on land or on the river, their actions have to be perfectly coordinated. So this afternoon, a major exercise is planned. Agent Kleber is tasked with preparing the weapons that will be used, paintball guns. It makes it a better simulation and gets the adrenaline going. It puts us in a real situation because the team will be shot at. We're not using real bullets, but the impact will hurt. So the officers will do everything they can to protect themselves. Special Agent Rodriguez has planned a very precise exercise. Smugglers, played by some members of the team, will be spotted on the river. The goal is to surround and arrest them. This operation will require men on the ground and on the river. So today, at approximately 4.30, a weapons and drugs drop will pass here. The scene has been set. Rodriguez gives the signal. The timing is precise. Every officer has to play their role as if it were reality. There will be gunfire and grenades. Then the boat unit will request backup. The other team in the car will come down to the riverbank following the first confrontation. The bandits will be facing us.
The tactic is to create a smoke screen so they can't see what's coming. So we throw smoke grenades and open fire. Surrounded by the officer's fire, the false criminals have no choice. They surrender. So it was OK? Perfect. It was perfect. Hey, you got hit. Yeah, I got hit on the arm. <laughs> Fiction soon turns into reality. There will be a nighttime operation. The Nepalm officers are ready. They just have to wait for nightfall. At the Guayaquil base, the men keep themselves busy while waiting for their mission. The GIR recently acquired some new equipment, a virtual shooting stand. The men are in their uniforms, standing in front of a screen that puts them in contact with real situations. This weapon is very real. It has a loader. It's the same sensation you get with a real gun. It weighs the same. It's made of the same material. The Glock pistol replicas the officers are carrying shoot a laser and react just like a real gun. This is a very beneficial device. The officers can train more frequently, and it's less expensive. In fact, we save money using this. And we have to be careful about our budget. A box of ammunition costs around $150. On the other hand, batteries don't cost very much. In a room on base, men are getting ready for an emergency. These are GIR divers. The unit is also skilled at operating underwater, but often for morbid reasons. Our specific function as an institution, as part of the National Police, as the gear, is search diving. In other words, we locate the bodies of people who have died on the river, whether in rough currents, clear, or stagnant water. To sum up our mission, we recover cadavers. In 2016, the divers recovered 52 bodies. Returning remains to families so that they can grieve is an important mission for the GIR. We're trained to serve society. We don't distinguish between citizens. Our job is to serve everyone. but it doesn't mean they have found anything. It's for our own safety that we always surface with our hand in the air, okay? Because if we're gonna lose something, we'd much rather it be our hand than our head. The unit came out in vain. They won't find a body this time. The rhythm of their training in almost daily operations is intense, but it doesn't affect the GIR officers. We're going to shout out our motto all together. Come, please, comrades. Hands in, one hand. We're the first. We're the best. We're the officers against the guerrillas. 
All our lives until death. Until when? All our lives. All our lives. Until the end. Until the end. Night has fallen over Foz do Iguaçu. The Nepal base is preparing for the nocturnal operation. Agent Kleber and Special Agent Rodriguez are ironing out the final details. The operation will be carried out on land and on the river. Usually they take this road from above to escape our line of sight. After there's Portobello, they'll moor near the Buddhist temple. Only then it's more difficult to approach because there are three kilometers between here and there. So for them, there are only 350 meters and they can hide in this little section of the river here. Two men are on foot, camouflaged in the swamp. In the favela, unmarked vehicles are in position, ready to act. And on the river, speedboats are watching. Traffickers use the cover of night as an advantage, but the Nepalm officers have a bigger advantage, high-tech equipment. These are thermal binoculars. They pick up body temperature from three or four kilometers away. This night vision headgear strengthens light so that we can sail at night. It can detect the shape of a boat from three or four kilometers. At two kilometers, you can tell if it's an animal or human on the edge of the forest. You can tell if it's a person with something in their hands, a gun or something else. We have two colleagues who are positioned closer to the Jupira favela, who are monitoring movement. They'll give us the green light to approach. If we're successful, we'll seize the goods. It's almost time to act. The Nepalm officers, hidden on the riverbank, have discovered a weapons cache. This is proof that they're on the same track the traffickers plan on using. They position themselves close by. The information is transmitted to the mobile patrol. The Nepalm officers decide to approach. The suspects are quickly apprehended in the favela. They would have stored and sold the goods. For the time being, the officers have to make sure they cannot communicate with the rest of the gang arriving from Paraguay by boat. A boat is spotted on the river. It's the traffickers. The patrol officers make their presence known. The aim, scare and push the criminals towards the officers waiting for them on the riverbank. The smugglers are arrested without incident. A significant weapons and drugs trafficking operation has been neutralized. Nepalm's success isn't a fluke. The group is limited to the elite. The members are evaluated every day. If their ranking goes down, they are kicked out. Because we're a small group and there's a lot of work, we have to split up the tasks. If an officer isn't motivated by his work, or if he shows a lack of discipline, the team won't stand for it. They'll ask him to leave. We're here to work, to fulfill our duty. We'll never let one member's actions harm the team's work. Brazil and Ecuador's elite patrol officers are just as operational on land as they are on water. Their success is the result of intensive daily training. And above all else, the result of unwavering devotion and unity. Thank you.